STV, votre télé. APM News on STV, one headline. The fourth Congress of the Manidem political party will hold in the economic capital, Douala, despite refusal from Douala One officials, a court case between both factions of the party to determine the way forward has ended with a status quo. Now the news in full. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Members of the National Commission for the Promotion of Bilingualism and Multiculturalism continue meeting with the Northwest people to seek solutions for the end of the Anglophone crisis. During one of their working sessions, authorities of the Northwest were sent out to make the people talk freely. Details with Lovett Bay. The main objective of the visit of members of the Commission for the Promotion of Bilingualism and Multiculturalism to the Northwest region is to get the people talk frankly. In order to effectively achieve this, the governor of the Northwest region, together with his entourage, were excluded from the working session in order to let the people talk freely without any intimidation. Chairman, I beg you one more time. Let us stop the carnage. The amount of killing that's going on. You cannot be okay to the last anglophone. You will keep to the last. So the military solution is not the answer. Children come to school with fear. Teachers are sitting in the office with fear. Then we head of institutions haunt it. I heard our uh, other brother said here that youths are all that they are endangered species. Let me tell you, teachers too are also endangered species. Especially, especially the heads of the institutions. For the constitution is is morning 30, almost 30 southern Cambodians who were massacred some five days ago. They were massacred some five days ago because of a diabolical plan that went terribly wrong. Southern Cameroonians are dying. The youthful population is dwindling. By my estimation, it is targeted. You won't have us in six months. Ordinary man has been caught in a trap. If they don't listen to what the people from the bushes say, they come and kidnap them and ask for them. If they don't listen to what the government says, they shoot them. You, the commission, where does the common man belong? They usually treat the press so badly. And when you treat a journalist so badly, the journalists can only very see bad news very well. The press would have accompanied the government in the early days in all actions that were taken to resolve this crisis. The Prime Minister will come and run around seven divisions of the Northwest talking to the population and talking very lofty things to the population and unfortunately is moving either with the CRTV Cameroon Tribune. The Minister of Public Works, Emmanuel Ganun Jumesi, has expressed satisfaction over the advancement of works at the Hompon Deidu Bonaberry stretch of road as well as the second bridge over River Vuri. He made the appraisals May 31 here in Douala while on a site visit to ongoing projects. Harry Wana reports. This site visit to the littoral region by Public Works Minister Emmanuel Nganon Jumesi, alongside his Secretary of State Aman Jondom, was to provide them a better understanding on how far infrastructural projects under construction have been unfolding in order to propose solutions to lift the constraints related to the execution of such projects and to have the different projects execution timeframes respected. At the second bridge over River Wuri, the minister and his delegation were taken on a tour to evaluate what has been done this far to free the Rompon de Dubonaberry Road, which has for years remained a difficult stretch of road for road users to ply. We had to construct this second bridge. I will say the work is on, almost done. We had also to do some job, some secondary job in the Bonaberry city. We have completed already. 
So we still have to complete our secondary job in the day to connection. What I will say is that we have to continue. We will have a, a working session with the government delegate in order to identify what should we do again in order to ameliorate the situation. Other components like the development of landscapes and lightning were equally evaluated with assurance given by the contractors to deliver the project on time. However, before coming to Douala, the minister and his team have been to the Kribi Lola Bay motorway project site, the Douala Bonepupa, Yabasi site, and the National Road No. 3, where the replacement of ring and pipe covert by box covert is already underway. Proposals have been made in Douala, awaiting execution time from the competent authorities. The Bonanjo Court of First Instance has controversially granted clearance to Anisei Kane to organize the Congress of the Manidem political party. However, the decision is likely to fuel the leadership crisis at the party as Giordoni Yebga has vowed to fight back. Peter Sosi. Anisei Ekane has won the right to organize the Congress of Manidem following a ruling from the Bonanjo Court of First Instance Friday. A lawsuit filed by Jodoni Yebga, president of the party, suspended by a faction loyal to Ekane, has done little to alter the preparations of the meeting, deemed illegal by the plaintiff. Dissatisfied with the ruling, he is envisaging the next step. Nous avons saisi le juge de Ferré. We are going to the superior judge for the annulment of this pseudo congress, but we shall also attack the administrative order which authorized the clandestine movement. On his part, Anise Ekane, visibly satisfied with the court's ruling, believes that his opponent has lessons to take. The lesson we take from this matter is that. One cannot be president for life, and at all costs in a political organization like Manidem, the president must follow party guidelines and be in the spirit of the movement. Ekane reveals that the Congress today will review the party's organs and a new leader will be put in place. However, the battle is far from over as Jodone Yebga has vowed to fight back. He believes that his rival is working with administrative authorities against him. The Cameroon Female Association for Development is calling on Cameroonian women to invest in the political train in Cameroon for the realization of developmental projects in their country. This was during her second national forum that took place in Douala today. Heruana reports. Getting as many Cameroonian women as possible to assist the government in the realization of her major developmental project is the sole objective of AFEDEC, meeting Friday, June 1, 2018 in Douala for their second national forum. Focus was to map out strategies on how to go about encouraging more Cameroonian women to join politics since we are in an electoral year. C'est juste que nous nous sommes rendu compte que autour de nous il y a des femmes Recent findings have revealed that even the few women already into politics, very few of them do make an attempt going into elections. Et celles même qui se sont déjà intéressées, elles ne prennent pas la décision elles-mêmes de d'être candidate. Uh, at this election. Thus, a seminar of this magnitude, grouping politicians, political sympathizers, as well as physically challenged, so, so according to the national ici, president, Nadej Mapugwe, should serve as an eye opener for no Cameroonian woman to be left indifferent joining the political train. However, with just 31 female males out of the total of 370 in the country, there is no doubt a dire need for more women to get interested in the political sphere of the country and get themselves registered into the electoral register. For sure, sensitization campaigns may be multiplied, rallies organized nationwide monthly by civil society organizations to encourage Cameroonian women in joining the train, but one thing is certain. The 52% female population in Cameroon has the final say, either making their voices heard or continue to remain as hand clappers. 
A mutual guarantee fund has been created to assist small and medium-sized enterprises have access to finance piloted by the subcontracting and partnership platform BSTP. Its creation follows a consultative general assembly today in Douala. Peter Sosi. Small and medium-sized enterprises in Cameroon contribute enormously to the economic tissue of the country, but one of the impeding factors to their growth and efficiency is difficult access to finance. For the SMEs, is a lack of money. They don't have money to, to put in place to realize their objective and to put in place really their projects. This setback is further compounded by the inability of banking institutions to effectively evaluate the financial needs of these enterprises to strengthen their financial capacities. The subcontracting and partnership platform has designed a mutual guarantee fund with the hope of ameliorating the collaboration between them and banks. What we are putting in place as a company is a mutual uh, guarantee company so that small and medium-sized enterprises will put together a part of the guarantee fund and we will work to mobilize other financial partners who will consolidate that guarantee fund. A consultative general assembly Friday in Douala has capped a six-month training session in which actors have been schooled on all aspects concerning the fund. A supervisory body has been elected to ensure the smooth functioning and coordination of the scheme. So today we put in place the company, uh, we put in place the different offices and now we are supposed to start working next week. Attractive sectors to the mutual guarantee fund include production and manufacturing, agriculture and livestock, trade, tourism and ICTs. The initiative is backed up by the Ministry of Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises, Social Economy and Handicraft, as well as the European Union. Some Douala city dwellers decry traffic in some strategic areas in town due to events. Between Friday and Sunday, circulating around the city is rather complicated. Henry Wana. Driving within the city of Douala on a Thursday, Friday or Saturday is never very easy especially in areas like Karifu Ajib and Furuj Besenge, just to name Bethis. It is either for a week keeping or simply a celebration that most roads in the heart of the city are being obstructed by organizers of such events, which consequently leads to traffic congestion and conflicts between road users and those who block them, a phenomenon which denizens of the city are not contented with. We cannot go for a month without having a blockage along this stretch of road from Karifu Besenge going down to Ndokote, a situation which at times leads to accident. In the morning, the road will be segmented into two canopies planted on one side and the other free for circulation. But in the evening, the road is completely blocked in such a situation, we are forced to use the other side of the road. I think this system of blocking the road for wakekeeping or other events is of no importance because it leads to a lot of road accidents within the city. For if one side of the road is blocked, road users are forced to use the other side of the road, which is not too big to accommodate the number of road users we have in the city. Perhaps this could be the needed solution to solve this issue rocking the city of Douala. I think Douala has a festival hall well equipped to host any kind of event or other halls in town affordable for people to rent to carry out wedding or funerals. It is high time those managing affairs of the city of Douala take into consideration this worrisome issue faced by denizens which may equally help reduce the usual traffic congestion in the city of Douala. On our health page tonight, we talk about tooth bleaching, which is gradually gaining grounds. However, dentists see using crude methods to get the results required may come with some effects. Going by the dentist, most cases of tooth sensitivity recorded stems from some products used in homes to get whiter and sparkling teeth. 
Those are most of the people we see in the hospital who present with sensitivity because they don't know which structure to protect and uh, when they are bleaching their teeth. They don't know which structure to protect and which structure to concentrate their, this, their, their materials that are used for bleaching. If you take bicarbonate, bicarbonate is alkaline, it is toxic, so it can actually harm the gums. Limes will cause what we call dental erosion. It will reduce this, the thickness of the enamel and expose the teeth, the dentin part of the teeth, and the patient will present with uh, sensitivity. So we usually see some patients who take limes, ordinary, not just for bleaching. Fat. Though the teeth cannot be made perfectly white, the color can be improved through tooth bleaching. Tooth bleaching is an aesthetic uh, process where the color of the teeth is changed from a particular color which is not pleasant to the eyes of a patient to a color which the patient would like to have. Uh, eventually, if you look here, we have what we call a shape guide which shows the different colors of teeth. So somebody who has this dark color might decide to have this particular color. So in the process of tooth bleaching, we can decide to change the color from this color to this one. To obtain desired results, some factors ought to be taken into consideration. For the doctor to actually be somebody, state, he has to understand that he's going to deal with two different st structures. You have the gums that are very close to the teeth and the teeth. These ones are tissues that you can easily destroy by chemicals. And this one is very hard. You cannot easily destroy by chemicals. So the first thing the doctor does is to isolate this particular soft tissue, which is a gum, from the teeth, because this is the area of work, the area of focus. Isolate this one and apply some chemicals to either we actually neutralize the chemical that is going to apply here. So when he applies this one now, uh, applies the actual chemical on the, t the surfaces of the teeth, he can use light, particular light, to activate the chemical and reduce it. Patients could be faced with severe complications if the bleaching process is not handled professionally. If you are not experienced enough to isolate this, these gums from the teeth, the chemicals can burn the gums. Okay. So after the bleaching, the patient will be subjected to severe pain that can take from a week to a month because the the patient will suffer from what we call chemical burns. And then the second one is that the gums can reduce in, in, in size and the teeth become longer, what we call gingival recession. And then the neck of the teeth will be exposed and then the patient will have what we call sensitivity. Another one is that the, the, the bleaching material can stay on the teeth for long and then create some small, small holes on the teeth. And when the patient takes some hot, something that is cold or hot, he starts feeling some shock, it's still sensitivity. And then another complication is that the teeth will not bleach. Dental surgeons say the color of the teeth depends on the complexion and we should abstain from products like tobacco, color nuts, dark drinks. African beads are being introduced into the Cameroon fashion world with items such as sandals, sepals and necklaces in markets. In most parts of the southwest region, this fashion style is common among youths. Pelagi Ekweni reports. Fashion, which is a popular style, especially in clothing, footwear, lifestyle, products, accessories, makeups, hairstyle and body is incredibly idealistic. Sometimes, nothing gets more exciting than the premise of exposing one's toes to a well-deserved airing. Was leading to this new trend of sandals and slippers in most shops and markets within the town of Boya. We do them because most people like them. Yeah, most people like the fashion thing, most especially the traditional things. Yeah. As you can see, this is gold beads, size 2, and water crystals, plastic water crystals, multicolor. Yeah, these are the things I use to do this one. Unlike normal everyday shoes, the need for this perfect pair becomes all the more 
important. First of all, it's beautiful and uh, secondly, it's free. It's comfortable. When you put it on, you feel comfortable, you feel free. You easily move, you move freely, actually. That's why I chose that. This is African beach. I love it. It's really beautiful, as you can see. And it makes me to go back to my roots as an African. Given the fact that items we wear are oftentimes a powerful and apparent form of personal expression, there is always the need to buy, despite the price. This is the sandals that are made for this bit. 5,000 pounds for this. Despite all the prices, I don't want to make them to buy this because they love the designs, the things are beautiful, they love the African fabrics. However, due to the prevailing socio-economic situation in the town of Boya, these new designs of cinders and slippers made out of beads will help to enormously boost the economy and create jobs for a huge number of designers and salespersons within the region. Let's get news out of Cameroon with VOE. People in Bikoro celebrate this man's recovery from Ebola. Mwangi Nondi says he developed a fever after caring for his brother, who died from Ebola. But Nondi is better now after receiving the Ebola vaccine. Doctors in Congo say they have not been able to vaccinate everyone who has been exposed to the virus, and they're still finding new cases that are not linked to cases they have already confirmed. This means the virus is still actively spreading and health workers still don't have an accurate picture of what's going on. Congo's vaccination campaign is targeting more than 1,000 health workers, along with those who have had contact with people who developed the virus. They use a ring approach, where health workers identify newly diagnosed Ebola patients and then set out locating people they've been in contact with, from family and friends to neighbors and work colleagues. The vaccine they're using was developed during the Ebola outbreak in West Africa. It's not licensed yet, but it has proven to be safe and effective. What it does, it teaches the immune system to recognize those Ebola proteins on the surface of this modified virus, and in doing so, create a protective response against that. Because the vaccine can only be tested when there's an Ebola outbreak, there are many unknowns. What we're trying to do now is to establish how effective is this vaccine. Do you need one dose or two doses to be protective? And once you've been injected or vaccinated with this, how long does that protection last for as well? Containing the virus is difficult because many areas impacted by the outbreak are close to heavily used waterways. It started in rural Bigoro, then moved to Mbandaka, a busy port city along the Congo River. People use the river to bring produce to the country's capital, Kinshasa. Health workers say keeping Ebola out of heavily populated areas is critical to containing this outbreak. Carol Pearson, VOA News, Washington. That does it for today's 8 p.m. newscast on SCV. It was a pleasure being with you all along as from Monday. Join Henry Wana at exactly 8 p.m. Have a lovely weekend. STV, votre télé.